Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's talk about um, an issue that a lot of uh, people on the internet don't know exists, and that is what part of the web are you actually using? Uh, during this time, we've been talking uh, about, like, digital, uh, about like, digital literacy, keeping kids safe on the web, getting information off the web, but a lot of people don't realize that the, the, the internet you use is only 10% or even less of the actual internet itself. Um, so when you go here and you click on Google, you do a search, you are only finding things that are actually indexed so they can be found. Like nmsu.edu is right there. And uh, there, there are billions and billions and billions of sites out there people can go to, see, and visit. But what a lot of people don't realize is the internet itself is comprised of a whole bunch of different components. One happens to be the clear web, and that's what we use, and that's what you see every day, uh, search, research, Google. But a lot of companies hide stuff in what's called uh, the dark web or the uh, uh, dangerous web, whatever you like to call it. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to show you how that works and what it does. So here is a graphic of the web. It's called the dark side of the internet. This is what where a lot of companies put stuff. This is where a lot of things are hidden. Um, and and like I said, a lot of your a lot of what you do uh, that's actually digitally is hidden in here, hospital records, so forth. That's why you won't see them. Uh, and it's and you can use special software called uh, the Tor browser or the Onion routers. Now, this is the browser that can access the majority of all the items in the dark web or that you cannot find using Google and those kind of things. This is a free program and you can get it from uh, uh, the Tor browser. If, if, you, if you Google that, you can get it. Um, so here's how you can think of the internet. You can think of it as uh, I guess like an iceberg. Uh, the top 10% here is what you see in Google, everything like that. Um, it's about 10% of the total internet, and that's where Twitter, Facebook is, and it's about uh, 19 uh, a terabytes in size, quite a bit of websites, and it's uh, cluttered and filtered. That's why when you look for stuff, you get that. Now down here, under the water, is we have about uh, the other 90% of it is underneath where you don't see it, and most people can't get to it without using that Tor browser I just showed you. Uh, the deep web also at this level will be where you can put uh, your academic information, medical histories, legal documents, uh, government resources, um, and it's quite a bit of stuff that is unknown and down here. Here's where companies put bank information just because it's harder to find and harder to break into. Now if you go farther down it, it becomes more darker, which hence the term. Uh, here you have 100% anonymity at this point. The dark web is where uh, quite a bit of uh, the criminal activities happen. Uh, here we can see drugs, fraud, uh, black market, Bitcoin blogs are even in here, which is kind of unusual. Uh, here's where you can also purchase things. You can buy black market items, but uh, you can you can buy uh, you can buy botnets. Here's where the government looks for terrorists fraudulent activities, phishing, uh, and then here's what's really scary is things on the internet or in the dark web you can buy extremely cheap. For instance here you have social security number, you can buy them at a dollar piece. Uh, you, you can get Facebook accounts for a dollar, uh, you can do denial of service attacks for seven dollars, your medical record fifty dollars, spamming emails of five hundred thousand for fifty bucks. This is just scary in itself. If you have a bit more money you can actually purchase pre-made Virus software, you can get bank details from rich people, poor people, people like me that don't have any money, criminal malware, and it, it's just scary that this is all available at that level. But it's not all bad. Government uses it for, you can use it for like whistleblower, you can use it for like activism. If you have a company and you want to put secure records out there, you can hide it inside of here. Uh, and, and where did it all begin? Timeline is, uh, began in the 1970s. And as you can see, it slowly started growing with the Tor network, which is actually developed uh, by the, uh, the Navy Department. Peer-to-peer, uh, -peer, 
Here's where you have, you have Bitcoin, and now it's about four, it's about four million users. Tor is the program here that I just showed you. This is the browser that allows you to go in and find the programs that you were looking for, or the links that you can't find normally. Uh, and then here's why they're harder to find because they have a, a, a weird name, and then they usually have .umgen, which is uh, uh, the actual the actual um, preference domain preference used by it. Um, what's bad of it is uh, it's just it's not all criminal activity, but this is where they can hide credit cards, uh, different things of that nature. The conclusion being that uh, uh, the dark web is trying to be sought after by, uh, I guess, the federal government, local government, and they try to find things that are illegal and can't be used on it, or shouldn't be used at the level that it's at. Here's all the different companies that have the authority to do that. Ten ways that you can stay safe online. Uh, you want to stay away from the dark web, seriously. You only want to go in there if you know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing so I can go in there. Do not ever go in there on your own. Do not ever use your own real information. Keep all your software up to date. Use strong passwords. Uh, be careful when you use public Wi-Fi. Check your privacy settings. Uh, you want to look for the padlock in the corner up here. If you have a private site, uh, do not uh, do not download attachments with the paper clip from people you don't know. Uh, don't click on any links and emails unless you know the sender. Uh, make sure you have a firewall on, and it's always good to have a credit card that has a low credit limit. That way. When you purchase stuff, it's easier to get back $250 than it is your primary account. And if you're not sure, just uh, go purchase one of those prepaid cards. Uh, and that's pretty much it. This is just a quick overview of the dark web and how it actually shows you that it, we are only in the 10th percentile up here on everything we do. Research, school, home, family, business, society type thing. And if you want to be even safer, you can actually download a VPN program that to the virtual private network, and this will kind of help you hide, not necessarily hide, but protect yourself from hackers because it can put you in any location in the world you want to be, and it just kind of uh, uh, disguises what you're doing on that. So with that being said, I just want to say uh, thank you, and I hope you get something out of this because, like I said, I just wanted to show you the other 90% that you don't know exist out there. Thank you very much.